What's up, guys? Welcome back to Tech Talk. Uh, Wednesday? Yeah, uh, so yeah. we decided this week, uh, instead of having Tech Tuesday on a Tuesday. Yeah, like boring people. Yeah, we're gonna have Tech Tuesday on a Wednesday yeah. because time is a man-made illusion. Yeah. And also because Ricky had jury duty yesterday. Uh-huh. But most importantly, because today Apple had another one of their big keynote events. Ooh, there was a ton of eyes in that. And there's a yeah. ton of eyes in these new products. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> so just as many had predicted leading up to today, Apple unveiled a new Apple TV set-top box that plays iOS games, as well as new iPhones and iPads, and new updates to iOS and watchOS. So let's start off with that Apple TV, which had the most significant changes since its last generation of any of the products that they showed off. Yeah. Uh, the new Apple TV runs off of an entirely new operating system called TVOS, Cute. with its own app store. It includes the usual stuff like Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, Watch ESPN, and so on. No Pornhub app yet. Yet. It also has a new remote with touchpad and microphone built into it, making navigation significantly easier, especially now with Siri built in to execute voice commands, which will allow your lazy ass to just sit there and say shit like, hey Siri, show me some funny TV shows so I can watch. Uh, I would imagine that you'd be doing this while you're pressing your Kraft macaroni and cheese yeah. button next to you. And Siri pulls up the Big Bang Theory. It's just like, <laughs> here you go, you fucking idiot. Yeah, <laughs> shove that down your gullet. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Siri will then do a global search across all TV apps, and it'll try yeah. to match your request. It does it across all of your installed apps, though, which yeah, is so cool. So, like, yeah, if you want to watch, like, show me uh, Big Bang Theory stuff, and they're like, if you want that, here, here's the Big Bang Theory on Hulu, but if you like the Big Bang Theory's Jim Parsons, yeah. here's some shitties on a Netflix that'll yeah. also suck. There you go. Anyway, of course, after that, uh, the biggest new feature is gaming. The new remote's touchscreen, as well as its Wiimote-like motion abilities, Ooh. which you're surely gonna chuck into the wall or into the TV screen. You gotta buy one of those seat belts for it. For yeah. your seat belt for your wrist. They'll allow for playing most iOS-style games that are optimized for the TV. Yeah. But as Apple's also opening the door to third-party controllers more in the vein of actual consoles like the Xbox and the PS4. You can get an actual oh, there you go. Like, console controller. Of course, now you're not gonna get anything near current gen out of the gaming experience or the available title on Apple TV, but they seem to be positioning themselves as basically what the original Wii was back in the day. The, the console that's so simple, even mom and dad can play. Yeah, we're gonna play some, some Wii bowling and yeah. Wii darts. Wii tennis. The whole Harp, family sure. gathered around for a whole six months in 2005. <laughs> well, more like six hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it was very quickly over. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know who's into this. Yeah. Like, it, it, do your parents, would they, I don't know. Doubt anyway, it. Uh, with casual mobile games becoming such a huge industry among people who wouldn't traditionally be referred to as gamers, this actually could work out well for Apple. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like I said while we were watching this, Nexus Player does that. They have uh, game pads and you can play pretty much any Android game on your Nexus Player. Uh, well, Mom and Dad uh, are scared of the Android man. It, not Razer, but what's it? Oh, NVIDIA has a uh, set-top box. Mom and Dad don't know what an NVIDIA is. Yeah, well, there you go. So this is for... I don't know, it's it's whoever wants Apple products. Anyways, the price point of $149 for 32 gigs of storage and $199 for 64 gigs of storage isn't nearly as palatable as the old Apple TV at just 70 bucks, or, or especially a Roku, or even a Nexus player like we talked about, or the Fire TV, they kind of like, actually it was weird because we always dog on Amazon products, but they kind of led the way as far as the innovation goes uh, for this the, Apple uh, product. So games, yeah. there you go, Amazon, you spend all of your budget developing stuff that other people just, would take over. <laughs> <laughs> just get rid of all the bullshit that they made and bring it, bring all the good stuff over. But are people gonna throw down all that extra money just because this is Apple? Probably, Probably, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many of those people are actually gonna give a shit that you can play games on it though. No, they just want the next biggest best thing. Yeah, so that remains to be seen. Anyways, moving on to the next biggest reveal, the iPad Pro. So this is another one that people have been speculating about for a very long time and it's finally happening. It's a gargantuan 12.9 inch iPad, which they introduced via a video that seemed to promise customers that it bestows godlike powers upon the user, granting them the ability to manipulate the very fabric of space and time. Yes, I think I'll move Earth over here. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's a little too hot right now. I'll yes. move it a little bit further away from the sun, yes. Of course it can't do any of those things, <laughs> no. but this is still without a doubt the biggest leap Apple has made on its touch devices in a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, the screen is huge, almost twice as large as the standard iPad, and with that comes the highest resolution Apple has ever put on an iOS device, 2732 by 2048. Yeah, now it has a significantly faster CPU and GPU than its predecessor, and at the keynote they said it's quote, faster than 80% of portable PCs shipped in the last 12 months, which 
you know, it could mean anything. Yeah, I'd like to see a little more data on this. Yeah, there's a bunch of like really cheap knockoffs. So you can get like a tablet. It's like those check for free, 80 bucks. <laughs> the free laptops they give the kids in yeah, Africa. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, but it's finally got an official snap-on keyboard stand, kind of like the uh, the Windows uh, yeah, RT tablet. They're clearly positioning it as a direct competitor to the Microsoft Surface. Exactly. So along those same lines, it's also got an official stylus now, <laughs> the cute. Apple Pencil. Which is actually a hell of a lot cooler than it sounds. I was scoffing at this when they first- Steve Jobs said no stylus. Well, he's dead. He said you're gonna lose it. He also said no chemo or no, no listening <laughs> yeah. to doctors. Just gonna eat vegetables. Yeah, <laughs> just give me all the fruit. So maybe Steve Jobs isn't as smart as everyone says he is. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, drawing on this thing looks pretty much on par with using a Wacom tablet. It's got super precise force and tilt recognition which allows really accurate simulations of painting and charcoal drawing and all sorts of drawing. I think a lot of people who are into like drawing and cartooning and art are gonna be into this. No, the best Real tweet hard. I saw about this was, was uh, you're gonna be really upset when you drop your Apple pencil in between the uh, seats Ooh. of the, the airplane. Yeah, the pencil's off. It's $99. So yeah, so do not lose don't that. Don't lose that. Don't yeah. sit on it either. Yeah. Anyways, they continued to uh, prove that this is basically a surface killer. They brought out people from fucking Microsoft <laughs> to show off the Microsoft <laughs> Office capabilities of this thing, which make it a hell of a lot more useful for work than its previous generations. Yeah, I mean, I've tried doing work on a iPad before and you can't. Yeah. But with the keyboard and with the ability to move, you know, have like multiple apps open and shit. I, I don't know. I, everyone knows my stance on Microsoft Office products. They're fucking garbage. And they I'd are. rather use Google because they took the best parts and simplified it. Anyways, with all this new screen real estate and functionality comes a hefty, hefty price tag. With a 32 gig model going for $799, 128 gig model going for $949 and the 128 gig cellular model going for $1,079. And uh, this is gonna come out in November, just in time for Christmas. Yeah. The Good price. old, st st it's actually too big to be a stocking stuff. You're stuffer. gonna need a bigger stocking. <laughs> That's true. Uh, but yeah, the pricing, they're positioning it like very... It's in line, it's with, in the line with the Surface Pro 3. The regular yeah. Surface I know is like 500, but you can't do jack shit with that thing. And you're not gonna want the 32 gig model because any kind of professional stuff you're gonna be doing on this yeah. will instantly wipe out that storage capability. Yeah. Um, and then of course, there's the annual tradition of revealing the new iPhone, yeah. which at this point means a new new iPhone every two years, and then a sorta new iPhone every year in between. That's why they put the S on it. Yeah, this is one of those sorta new years with the iPhone 6 sorta, and <laughs> 6 sorta plus yeah. looking pretty much the same, except uh, for now you can get rose gold. Ooh, it's actually just For the shitty, girls. It's shitty pink. It's shitty. Finally, a phone pink. for the girls. It looks like they painted it hot pink and left it out in the sun for a day. Yeah. Eh. Any, anyway, the insides are different with the usual performance upgrades, an A9 chip instead of an A8, a 12 megapixel camera instead of an eight megapixel camera, and a 70% faster CPU and 90% faster C, uh, GPU. Uh, now the thing is, is we've admitted many, many times the camera on the iPhone is unbeatable in the mobile market. Yeah, and they it showed off best, a yeah. bunch of new shit. Like, it's all fucking science that I don't want, I don't understand it and at all. No, like, no iPhone user even cares about. Yeah, it's just a good camera that like, Works as a phone. Yeah, it works great. Yeah. So I, I, I cannot deny the fact that the all the stuff we're going to talk about from here on out is just extra shit that they added that you're probably not going to. Yeah, there's this new feature called 3D Touch that uses the amount of pressure you apply to the screen to add more functionality and efficiency to how you navigate iOS. It, it's like it's instantly the, turning it off as soon as anyone gets it. Just that's the thing. I don't know who's going to adopt this. I mean, it is the first major update to multi-touch in like 10 years. Yeah, and it basically functions as either like a right click or a preview button depending on the situation. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely one of those things that depends entirely on how app developers actually implement it, but it seems like with enough practice and like forcing yourself to use it, it could save you a lot of time that you would usually spend it's, tapping through menus and shit. You're definitely gonna have to learn how to use that, and I don't know if people will put up with it for a week or two to actually get the hang of it. Yeah. So. Well, what else does this thing do? Well, it shoots 4K video, but that doesn't matter because you probably don't have a 4K TV, and the files will either be huge, super compressed, or both. Uh, it, it's got a new feature that simulates a flash while taking selfies, which is kind of cool, but it uses the light from the phone screen to do that. It's kind of useful. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that everyone has taken a selfie in a dark room and be like, man. Snapchat already did that. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. There's apps that do it for you, okay. so there you go. Well, this one detects the color temperature in the room. Oh, great, yeah. great. Thanks, Tim Cook. Look at that dancing mouse. I just love Mickey Mouse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's also a new feature that you'll instantly disable called Live Photos. Yeah. It takes short two to three second videos each time you take a photo so that you can... I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. This is right up there with that sharing your heartbeat feature from the Apple Watch last year. Like, 
cool. I, I, you can do that now. I can't imagine ever wanting or needing to use it. I mean, it's literally a GIF, GIF or whatever. Like I said in my tweet today, we finally learned to pronounce the word GIF and it's <laughs> pronounced live photos. It, that, that is exactly what it's for. I think it makes those like, uh, it's, it's a high quality uh, but compressed image that's a video. It's, 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 it's a GIF. It's what it is. It's a GIF. That's all it yeah. is. Uh, it's for sharing on Facebook and Twitter and shit like that, and that's what it's for. Big deal. I don't know. Right, they also unveiled new charging docks, finally, something old school iPhone users will actually appreciate. And they also revealed a new Android app for painlessly syncing all of your important files from your Android device over to your brand new iPhone. Cheeky bastards. Yeah, they, they slipped that one through into the yeah. Play Store. Uh, Apple's also launching the iPhone upgrade program mm -hmm. where you buy your phone directly from the Apple Store and instead of paying all at once, you pay a monthly fee for the device and then get a free upgrade every 12 months. A lot of uh, carriers are doing this, so it makes sense yeah, that yeah. they would jump in. The cost for this ranges from $32.41 a month to $44.91 a month, depending on which phone model and capacity you choose to get. Which, everyone that complains about spending $7.99 a month on Netflix, fuck you. Yeah. I'm gonna spend 45 bucks a month on an iPhone. I need it. Yeah. If you still wanna buy the phone outright, the price point is exactly what it was for the last generation when it was launched. The 6S, or sorta, starts at $199 for a 16 gig model on a contract, and the 6S Plus starts at $299 for 16 gigs. Speaking of 16 gig phones though, why the fuck is that still a thing? Ugh. How am I supposed to do anything with that little amount of storage? Like, by the time you buy the damn thing, half of the storage is already used up by the operating system and the default apps that you can't delete yep. without jailbreaking the damn thing. Like, flash storage is so goddamn cheap right now, you can buy it in bulk from China, why is 16 gigs still even an option for fucking uh, it, phones? I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why it is. It's A, so that you'll never buy the 16 gig model, you'll instantly upgrade and spend more money, and B, uh, everything is everything is going to go cloud storage, and they want you to spend money on their cloud storage service. Yeah, that's Apple exactly is, why they want you to do it. iCloud is cheaper now, but it's not free. Yep, it's not like Google Photos. Well, they're making it more tantalizing for you to, to download that and pay for it, because otherwise you're going to have all this space taken up on your phone. You're not you, you're not going back and looking at photos all the time from three months ago. Just back it up on the cloud. Yeah, it's a, it's a complete scam. I agree, because they could fit any kind of storage. They, they have a fucking 250 gig flash that would fit yeah. in all of these immediately. You buy, you, but it's, yeah. it, it is counterproductive to their bottom line. It would line. take up no space. Yeah. There, there you, there's a fun, real funny thing. Uh, you used to be able to, like the uh, the first generation iPod mini, you could just crack that thing open and um, insert like a new yeah. like flash drive in there and like you could max it out to like yeah. a terabyte if you yeah. wanted to. It, it's ridiculous. So that, But that's why, that's why they're doing it like that. So don't be yeah. one of those people who gets fooled by that. And it's true. If you have the default apps, and the OS, but there's no room. In one year with app updates, you're gonna be out of space. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Anyways, Apple announced some new shit for the Apple Watch, but not a whole lot. Uh, they have a new operating system called OS2 that's gonna be released September 16th. Now, a key feature is listening to your unborn baby's heartbeat. Oh, great. Or something. Yeah, but the oh, cool you, thing is, yeah, you, yeah, tell you, me. you can also monitor your GoPro via the watch now, which is pretty cool. You've been able to do that via the, via the phone app for yeah. a long time, but now you can just set up your camera like that. That's cool. So all in all, this was one of the more exciting Apple events in recent years, but still nothing like the massive, mind-blowing keynotes that Steve Jobs used to make. But contrary to what Apple fanboys might think, there was actually some cool tech news that wasn't Apple-related this week from Apple's biggest rival, Google. Yeah, and if you're watching this video in Google Chrome, you may have already figured this out. Adblock doesn't work in Chrome anymore, and now you have to sit through all the YouTube ads that pay our salary. Yeah. Now, not only that, but if you have Adblock enabled in the newest update to Chrome, the only thing Adblock will actually block is the skip ad button that usually pops <laughs> up after five seconds. So You're sitting through all three minutes of that Allstate ad. Is this true? Well, okay, so yeah, once this became a known issue, the go-to explanation for it was that Google is actually you know, so they're, they're still not turning a profit on YouTube, which I was surprised to hear, yeah. but it's uh, actually, that's true. So by blocking ad blog and forcing ads on viewers, they'd now be making a lot more money by monetizing YouTube, but... Yeah, the, the actual explanation is a lot simpler and a lot more dumb. According to the developer at the Chromium Project, the open source foundation for the Chrome browser, the whole thing was an unintentional side effect for some security fixes that recently went into place. And that is to expect to be patched out within the next few weeks. So yeah, it was whoops. a mistake, whoops. In the meantime, uh, you can fix it really easily by just going into your Chrome apps and uninstalling the YouTube app which you totally don't need because yeah. YouTube is still a website that you can access the old fashioned way by typing www.youtube.com yeah. slash machinima etc. But in other adblock news, there's an adblock browser app that's available for iOS and Android devices, which is a pretty big deal because both Google and Apple have basically thrown in the towel by allowing 
that to appear in their app stores. Yeah, because mobile ads are annoying as fuck. Yeah. There, there's got to be a better way to monetize websites than by forcing full page pop-up ads on users the second they load a they're page. They're so hard to close oh, too. Oh, and, and they're tricky. Like if you hit the wrong spot, it like, yeah, boom. it does oh, a bunch of an a infinite loop. loop. <laughs> Redirect loop. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And like I, I'll, I'll just not visit sites on principle because of that. So fix it. I mean, apps like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, they've been running unobtrusive ads just in line with your feed for years. It's not a problem. It's not distracting or annoying. Yeah. It's time for like the web, or at least mobile web. companies that yeah. are still on the web and still making mobile websites to fix it. But but our ads are good and watch all of them. Yeah. Because God damn it, I want to keep making YouTube videos. Yeah. Watch our ads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's Tech Wednesday for this week. Sorry I went up late, but we want to make sure we add all the Apple news for you and not just speculation. Because if, if we would have put up the speculation video, ten hours later it would have all, all been refuted. So it was kind of pointless. I mean, they, the speculation was actually pretty spot on. Aside, of course, at this aside from the new so. iPad Pro, like that was the only one that sort of was a surprise. Yeah. Uh, anyways, check out our uh, podcast with Lil Dicky over here. He's an amazing guy. He's very funny, and we loved having him in the studio. So check out our podcast with Lil Dicky. Also, check out our recent news dump and some other stuff that's over here probably too. And by the way, oh, God, we hit fucking 700,000 subscribers. That's unbelievable, right? It's pretty good. Yeah. It feels good. And now we just got to get to 800,000. <laughs> yeah, shit. It's just, it, once you hit one goal, you gotta go to the next one. Until we hit a million and get that gold play Spin button. Spin that hamster higher. wheel until we, we get, get that. the, the gold play button, I'm taking it right down to the smelting factory and retiring forever. Cause it's, it's made not out of real- actually gold. Oh. Fuck. Yeah. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs>